Hi everyone. It's very interesting. I tried doing this reading earlier and uh, my head was just all jumbled up. Like I couldn't read. I was, <clears throat> I could read the cards, but it wasn't flowing like it would naturally. And I recognized that that's really what this week is about. It's, it's about not forcing the flow and because it's a very karmic, karmic week. And um, so I took a break because I started really super early this morning, took a break and did some energy work on myself and actually fell asleep for a little bit. And um, I could tell that my third eye and my crown chakra actually opened up a little bit more um, because I had some very lucid dreams while I was sleeping. And it was only like maybe an hour long. So... Um, I want you to really pay attention to your dreams this week and I want you to really pay attention to, um, the way that you are thinking because your thoughts are going to be very important. Um, this is a very karmic week with the Capricorn full moon and Saturn in retrograde conjuncting that moon. We also have Mars going retrograde, um, the day before the Capricorn full moon. So a lot, a lot, a lot of energy happening and, um, I feel like there are a lot of unions going on. Like, this is a big energy shift, especially today. Today's a big deal um, for that energy shift. I feel like a lot of um, twin flames and soulmates are coming into union after a very long time of struggle. Um, I feel like a couple of years of a struggle. Um, I'm also feeling like if you are still in separation and there isn't any sign of union in the near future, I feel like that other person is kind of waking up to who you are to them. They're realizing that there is a connection there and because like all this time they keep thinking about you or keep feeling you and they're not really sure why. Um, it's really funny because I was speaking with my best friend who's also kind of in this push-pull relationship, um, very karmic, and she and I were talking about like the difference between soulmates, karmic soulmates, and twin flames, and I told her, I said, all of those relationships are karmic whether it's good karma or bad karma. In fact, the twin flame journey, you have more karma with your twin flame than you do with anybody. The only difference between a soulmate and a twin flame is a twin flame is actually the other half of your soul, which makes it harder because you are not only mirroring each other, you're feeling so deeply um, the um, core reasons for the healing that needs to happen. And like I said, all the way back, you know, I'm, I've had karmic soulmates in my life. Um, I've had soulmates in my life, um, and they've all helped me heal, and they've all helped me push forward, push myself forward in some way. But even, <clears throat> like, I have huge fears right now with my journey um, with my twin um, of acceptance. Like, would he accept me for, you know... Um, and, and a lot of it is like very insecure feelings. And so I want you to pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. What is it that's real? And what is it that the fear or the hurt or the insecurities, what are, what are those things saying to you? Be very, very consciously aware of what you are telling yourself because you know what's real. And only you know what's real. You know, the insecurities of... Um, do I, you know, am I the way that he would want me to look? Am I the way that he, you know, do I act the way he'd want me to act? Like there's that, if, if you're like beating yourself up, like I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, that is the kind of vibration that you're going to put out there. So find out what it is that you really need to heal within yourself so that you are not beating yourself up in that way. Um, because you are good enough, you know? And yes, we all have to make improvements, but... Um, you know, this journey is, is so hard. It's, this journey is hard enough without adding extra stress to yourself or extra worries to yourself. 
um, that aren't warranted. And this week is going to show you that. You know, what, what is it that you are adding to your stress or adding to your karma that isn't warranted? So let's see what the Divine Feminine Energy is. Um, a couple of things really quick, just to um, <clears throat> get it out of the way, I guess. Um, the in-person readings for the New York event, the in-person readings I'll be doing the weekend that I'm in New York, and the in-person readings for the weekend I'll be doing in Boston, the event in Boston, the workshop in Boston. Um, those are all available on my website. Just for New York and Boston right now, I haven't done the other two. Um, there's only eight spots for the entire weekend. So if you want to have an in-person reading while I'm there, check that out. They're all time, they're like time slots. So you're actually getting a time slot. Once you choose the slot and you order it, I will contact you with the location and the confirmation. So you know that I've got it. Um, and let's see. Oh, I've also opened up a, um, a limited amount of the soulmate recorded readings. They're a little bit different now. You have a 30 minute option to get a regular soulmate reading and then add 30 minutes for healing for union if you would like to do that. So check that out also on my website, fearlessintuition.net. So let's see. Where is the feminine? Ooh, those almost came out, almost came out. Okay, I'm going to pick from the middle. Win or lose. So the Five of Swords, which is exactly what I was talking about. This is, to me, the Five of Swords is always a deception of your mind. Yes, it could mean that you're being deceived by somebody else. But I feel like this week, I mean, swords are thoughts. Swords are thoughts. So really, really, really be aware. Be very conscious and be very aware of what you're telling yourself. What is it that's real? What is not real? Um, because a lot of karmic stuff will come up. A lot of karmic healing will come up. And you'll have to fully recognize how it is that you've been talking to yourself. So I'm using The Witches to Row by Ellen Dugan again. Um, I've been really called to use this deck a lot. It's beautiful. That one wanted to come out. <clears throat> so the Seven of Pentacles is the first card. See, and this is where our deceptive thoughts come into play. When we're waiting and waiting and waiting and almost boredom sets in. Like, And it's not even boredom. It's just, man, how long is this going to take? And then you start to think... Am I worthy enough? Is it going to work? Will he slash she like me? If you're waiting to hear, see, and that's the thing is I get this very strong, and I felt this very strongly last night as well, that a lot of people, right, will be hearing from their counterpart this week with the ace of cups it's and that's why I keep saying that the thoughts are deceptive because the reality is the emotion the filling up this is also while you're waiting for this to happen it's really time for you to fill up your own cup and self-talk is a big deal with filling up your own cup make sure that you're saying the right things to yourself and you're not saying deceptive things to yourself. Six of Swords. Be very... Six of Swords. Be very clear. This is clarity of mind, clarity of thoughts. Moving away from that rough Five of Swords energy. and into something much calmer and much lovelier. Um, and I do feel like it's a big week for the Divine Feminines to do this because of all of the ascension that has been happening and all of that deep soul work that has been happening. Um, 
it's easy to get lost in your mind when you are in a dark place. So that's why I always say, you know, make a make a um, big effort to not stay in that dark place. Really pull your, I'm drinking my yogi tea. And that's hot. Really um, self-talk is crucial. Crucial, crucial this week. Like I can't stress it enough how much self-talk is, is such a big deal. <clears throat> So we have the Nine of Wands. Tired of battling. Page of Swords. And the Six of Cups. Really tired of fighting. Um, and I feel that exhaustion. And that comes, and you know, like I've said to many, many people on this journey. It's okay to take a break. It's not going to lower your vibration. In fact, it may raise it. If you take a break and you consciously say, I am taking a break, I am, I'm going to do my best not to think about my twin or my counterpart. I'm gonna do my best to ease my mind in some way. I'm gonna do things for myself. I'm gonna you know, go out and have fun instead of sitting here and waiting and waiting and waiting because the fight is hard and we get exhausted and you have to refill yourself in some way. So in the Six of Cups is, I almost feel like this card is like, he'll still be there. He, she will still be there. The Divine Masculine, your counterpart, will still be there. Even if you have to take a break, even if you have to cut some things out for a while because things have been so deceptive in your mind. It's okay. Um... You don't have to watch all of these Twin Flame videos. Shoot, don't even watch mine <laughs> if you need to take a break. Like, it's not going to offend me. Um, I understand. I've had to do it. So, <clears throat> I want to clarify some of these, and then we'll move on to the Divine Masculine Energy. Um, I want to know what the Seven of Pentacles is, because I feel kind of um, a loneliness with it, or a boredom almost like why am I still standing here waiting for things to grow um well it's not harvest season yet right so patience is key I was gonna I was about to say that and then temperance fell out patience is key with this and then we have the four of cups which is apathy boredom not wanting to accept anything and again it's it's okay because I feel like a lot of people really fight this like, nope, you know, don't force yourself to stay in a situation that makes you feel uncomfortable. Don't force yourself into a situation that makes you feel uncomfortable. If it's too uncomfortable for you, if it is not doing any good for you to keep waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen, because you're not going to see it on the 3D. And you may pull away and start having a lot of dreams. So, be patient with yourself. Balance out your heart and your mind. And if you're tired of the waiting process, <clears throat> it's okay to fill up your own cup. Some of you who, some of you are waiting to reunite or unite or get into union with your counterpart. The High Priestess. See, this is what you should know. Your intuition is telling you it's coming. And that's why a lot of people keep holding on because your intuition keeps telling you it's coming. Well, your intuition is always going to tell you that because it is coming. We just don't know when. You know, time is an illusion. So we could say, Sure, it's coming in a week, but what does that really mean? It's coming in a year, but what does that really mean? When time is an illusion. When time doesn't 
you know, time is man-made. This relationship or this connection was not man-made. This was, this was at a soul level. So, <clears throat> balancing out your mind, I want to know what the Six of Cups is and the Page of Swords. And then we'll move on to the Divine Masculine Energy for the week. Um, Queen of Cups. So, the emotional connection... Again, use your intuition, as the, the Queen of Cups is very intuitive, and she's very open to the process, but use your intuition to know that they'll still be there if you have to take a break, if you're tired from the fight, if you're tired from the battle, they'll be there when you get back. And Page of Swords. Oh, there it flew. Here we go. Two of Pentacles and the Five of Swords on the Page of Swords. So this is clarifying everything that I said in the beginning. Um, because you need to make a decision to cut out the deceptive talk in your mind. Or the deception around you. If you feel like you're being deceived in any way by your counterpart. It's time to really cut that out. And I know that the decision is hard to make. But you have to make the decision for your highest good. Right? I like it. I actually really like this week because um, we do need a week of like settling the score within our mind and no longer giving ourselves like talking back to ourselves. No longer doing that. Um, it's time to be nice. Be gentle. Be gentle with yourself and your soul. Be very gentle. Okay, so... Divine Masculine. What is with the Divine Masculine this week? Okay. Healing begins. This is actually the Six of Swords. Healing begins. So, the, see the Divine Feminine? You got the Five of Swords. And the Divine Masculine is actually coming into a mental balance. And I feel like it's almost like the chatter is quieting in their brains. They're moving away from a rougher time in their life and coming into something much calmer and um, Nine of Pentacles, feeling very strong and proud. Um, the Nine of, top, of Pentacles talks about abundance. It talks about uh, being very independent. The High Priest. Um, which is the Hierophant. A lot of earth energy, too. So, um, the Hierophant talks about the institution. It talks about higher learning. Um, there could be, like, independently, the Divine Masculine. Like I said, there's kind of this knowing or this feeling that there is some kind of connection happening with the Divine Feminine, and they never really understood what it is. And I do feel like some Divine Masculines are actually going to study that. Like, what does this really mean? What What is all of this? Um, the Divine Masculine, it, it's um, and it's so strange because they, it's almost like they're being very independent in the decision making on where they want their stability to be. What do they want um, for their future? What do they want as something, you know, and it's... <clears throat> 
And we have the, the Empress, which I feel like is the Divine Feminine. Creation. Um, it's all about self-mastery. Which, you know, if... Okay, so I'm getting for some Divine Masculines, they're putting themselves in a position where they are mastering their future. They're, com they're growing so much this week. And again, if you're not seeing this on the 3D, if you're separated from them, and you're like, well, if they're growing, why aren't they contacting me? Um, they probably are still trying to understand what's happening to them. If they're going through an awakening and then the Three of Cups. So surrounding yourself with your soul group. Um, yes, this could mean that they do have a karmic relationship also. But um, what I'm feeling like is they're actually being becoming very independent of whatever situation they're in with this Nine of Pentacles. Um, and it's almost like they're coming together with their soul tribe, and then we have the shadow side, which is the devil, but it's called the shadow side in this deck. And having to look at the things that they didn't want to see before about themselves, and then mastering it, and healing it and coming into a higher level of independence because this six of swords is very profound. This healing begins is very profound where they're actually mastering their minds. And then the page of pentacles. So really wanting to start a new beginning, something that's stable, something that's grounded, wanting to offer something honest, um, they could still feel like they don't have much to offer. A lot of times that's how I feel with the Page of Pentacles. And it could be because they are in the middle of a healing process. Let's see what the Nine of Pentacles is. What is the independence? What is the abundance? Um, I do. I feel like they are feeling very independent and very abundant right now. Um, Seven of Wands. And kind of defending their spot, defending their position. Like, don't take my independence away from me. If they're in a situation where they feel trapped, um, I do feel like they're standing up for themselves. Because the devil often talks about feeling very trapped and very stuck. It could be a marriage that they feel very trapped and stuck in. Um, and they're like defending their independence. They're defending, you know, let me be me. So the Hierophant, what is this Hierophant for the Divine Masculine? Page of Swords and Six of Pentacles. Yeah, they're not going to... If this is a marriage we're talking about, they're not going to overly give their energy. The Page of Swords and the Six of Pentacles is cutting out all of that like energy sucking that they feel. But they could also be raising their vibration in a way where they're the give and take that they want to have in their life, they're really recognizing that. And they're cutting out all of the people, places, and things that really suck the energy out of them. Because the Six of Pentacles is all about giving of yourself, and a lot of times it's giving of yourself to places that do not, or people, places, things. And this doesn't have to be a marriage. It could just be a traditional relationship that they're in. Or it could be the institution, like... You know, maybe they're giving too much of themselves to the 3D world, to the outside world. And they're learning that they have to defend 
themselves in many ways to stay independent of that because the self mastery, the Empress, this could be the divine feminine. Yes. That they have on their mind, but more than anything, I feel like they're growing, they're creating, they're starting something new, starting something fresh. They're healing in ways and they're learning about themselves. Yeah. Karma, very karmic week. This is the judgment card. They have a lot of major arcanas coming out now. Um, it's like it's time for them to grow. It's time for them to move forward. No longer be stagnant in their lives. So... I want to see what the Three of Cups is. Actually, I want to see what all three of these are. Three of Cups. The Three of Cups could be the Soul Tribe. Um, it could also talk about needing to um, be social. Get out there. What is the Three of Cups? It could talk about toxicity, cutting toxicity out of your life. Yeah, the tower. Okay, so if this is a three-party thing, if they're in a relationship, if the Divine Masculine is in a relationship, um, that's crumbling. And it's interesting because the towers came along. Either the relationship is crumbling or they're recognizing that something needs to change. This is not stable. And... The thing with parts of our lives that aren't stable, the change is going to happen anyways, whether we like it or not. It kind of depends on how long it takes for that to happen. You know, because that's where free will comes into play. We can detour in our life all we want, but eventually we're still going to get to the same spot. Sometimes if we detour long enough, it'll just hurt more in the end. So, whether there's something within his life, and I do feel strongly, like, I don't want to trigger people into thinking, you know, you know, we're all going to, like, beat ourselves up and think anyways too much, right? But because with this healing begins, I do feel like that if there is too many people involved in this situation... Something is falling. Something is crumbling. There is a foundation that is definitely coming down. And because of this healing begins, that really makes me feel like whatever is not harmonious in his life, whatever is not stable within the divine masculine's life, that is really like falling. It'll be like coming down this week. I mean, strong energies from these two cards, which is strange because I did not get very strong energies with just the Three of Cups, but when that tower came out, it was like, and I'm trying to use my words wisely because I don't want everybody to think, oh, the Divine Masculine is going to be leaving. You know, this is a general reading. This is for a lot of people. So if you want to know specifics, you have to get a personal reading. Um, I try to make as many storylines as I possibly can with each of these, but this energy here is pretty, pretty potent energy. So the shadow side, we have the lovers and we have the ace of pentacles. So it's like, the, it's really like the universe is intercepting this week. And this is kind of what I meant. He is definitely learning very clearly what is the stable part of his life or what makes him feel stable when he looks at it. It's like the lovers are more stable for him than the institution of the 3d world. And that's where the independence is coming from. He's not thinking about, it's like the whole 
3D foundation of life is crumbling. And he's really having to look deep with the devil, the shadow side. And this is what the karma is this week. I mean, there has to be a change, right? There has to be a change. So, Page of Pentacles, last card. What is this Page of Pentacles? Knight of Cups. So even it's, <laughs> it's almost like, um, you know, the Knights are always my favorite index just because it's like so innocent of a gesture. Even the Knight of Swords, which can be very in your face, is like an innocent, you know, it's like an innocent talking to And I feel like as everything shifts this week, the Divine Masculine, as everything shifts and everything pushes forward, and know that this is happening without us having to do anything. Yes, we need to keep our vibration high. We need to keep that high vibration connection with him. Um, but the offering goes from a page of pentacles to a knight of cups. Something a little bit more emotional. So not only something that's stable, and it might just be a very small offering. Some of you might get a very small offering, but there's this want to do that. There's this want to go forward and offer something to the Divine Feminine that's very innocent and very sweet. Even if he feels like he doesn't have enough, or even if it seems like he doesn't have much to give, it's almost like I'm gonna give as much as I can. I'll give you what I can give you for now. And sometimes that has to be okay. So really ease your mind, Divine Feminines, because even if it doesn't happen this week, it's happening, whether whether we like it or not. The changes are happening, whether we like it or not. And if you have to take a step back, because you can no longer just wait and wait and wait and wait for this offer to come in, take a step back. You might be surprised. If you take a step back and you really focus on yourself and no longer deceive yourself, you might be surprised that this will just pop up out of the blue. So, okay, talked about the events, um, the workshops. Okay, so um, July 20th is New York City. July 27th is Boston. I do have eight in-person readings. That's all available on my website, fearlessintuition.net. Atlanta, Georgia is August 24th. Austin, Texas is August 17th. I still don't have the link yet for the Austin event, but I will find out this week about that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I know I keep saying that, and it's like, it is my every intention to actually get that link up and going, but there are things, you know, we gotta like go through red tape and stuff, so. Um, and then once I have both of those events, their links up, I will release some in-person readings. Um, remember, there's only a limited amount of in-person readings I'm doing for those weekends. And reminder that the Soulmate video recorded readings I did release some more of those. I'm only releasing them in small batches just to make sure that I have enough time and energy um, to do those readings. But I do, I did get a couple of emails, so I know that there, you know, people are asking. And um, so I'm scheduling them as I can through July and August. Right now, I think I have um, openings in the second week of July. So if you would like um, to get some, get a soulmate reading, video recorded reading, and of course, you can always choose the FaceTime. Um, we can do a phone call, FaceTime, Skype, Google Hangout, 
uh, Facebook Messenger. I even do that. So um, check out those, and I will see you guys for the rest of the July readings. Bye.